Hello you sexy beasts, welcome back to Blueprints Mini, the show where wings are an optional luxury. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the tier 4 British Premium, Plagueis Spitfire LF Mark IX. Johannes Plagueis performed his first military flights in the skies over Britain, piloting a Spitfire Mark V. Soon after this, he was transferred to Malta to join No. 249 Squadron at his own request. When he arrived on the island, Plagueis almost immediately found himself immersed in violent and bloody air battles. According to his own recollections, the situation in the air was such that If 4 of our planes went up against 20 or 30 enemy planes, we considered this to be good odds for us. Johannes Plagueis won the majority of his victories while piloting his Spitfire Mark V-B in these battles. As a result of constant battles, Plagueis suffered mental fatigue and was transferred to England to rest. Being already a squadron leader, he participated in the first flight tests of the new Spitfire Mark IX during his recovery. Once he was fully recovered, he commanded the number 64 squadron of the RAF in a new aircraft. In the second half of 1944, Johannes Plages was appointed as the commanding officer of number 126 squadron. During this time, he flew the Spitfire Mark IX-C ML214, coded 5JK, in the skies above France and Germany, where he achieved four victories. The number of Johannes Plages' victories totaled 13, 16 or 19 aircraft, according to various sources. The most accepted estimate is 16. If you wish to fly his Spitfire in the game, expect to pay 25 euros for the bundle, which includes the aircraft and 15 days of premium time. To put things into perspective, for the same amount you could get 5000 golden eagles, 90 days of premium or 2 plastic models of the P-51 Mustang. This Spitfire LF Mark IX has a battle rating of 5.3, both in arcade and in realistic mode, and as such can face anything from Focke-Wulf 190A Force to a Rado 23 Force. As with all premium aircraft, all modifications come unlocked from the get-go. On top of that, you gain an increased amount of silver lines and research points on any action you perform with this beauty. 200 and 500% silver lines respectively in arcade or realistic mode and 232% research points across both modes. In comparison, that's slightly higher than buying a talisman for the regular Spitfire LF Mark IX. The armament of this aircraft stays consistent with most Spitfires in the game, featuring four Browning 7.7mm machine guns firing at 1150 rounds per minute each and carrying a total of 1400 rounds, and two Hispano Mark II 20mm cannons mounted in the wings, firing at 700 rounds per minute each and carrying a total of 240 rounds. The resulting combined burst mass is 3.25 kg per second. Pretty mediocre at this tier. Additionally, you have the option to carry a single 250 pound bomb under the fuselage, which will allow you to take out a single light pillbox, medium tank or cargo ship. Now for the meat and potatoes of this review, the stats. If you wish to skip straight to the RB stats, click on the annotation that just popped up. Don't worry, I won't be mad at you. In arcade mode, this aircraft is a nimble and powerful machine capable of outclimbing and outturning most of its opposition. The average climb rate of 18.8 .8 m per second doesn't seem too impressive at first, but is significantly increased with the use of warm emergency power. I'm going to use that phrase a lot during the course of this review. If climb rate is an indicator, the engine seems to output the most power at an altitude of 3 km. Keep that in mind when engaging bombers and evading fighters. One of the drawbacks of this aircraft, as with most Merlin engine Spitfires, is the relatively low top speed average of 574 km per hour. Whilst the low altitude speed is great, allowing you to catch up to or outrun enemy fighters intended for higher altitude operations, it doesn't increase much with altitude and as such will leave you eating the dust of other, faster fighters. The Spitfire series are famous for the turning capabilities, and this LF Mark IX continues that legacy. The average turn time of 11.2 seconds will allow you to outturn mostly everything that isn't the Japanese Zero. Do keep in mind that your turning capabilities do drop off significantly below 350 km per hour. So, if you are absolutely forced to engage at those speeds, use your landing flaps for extra lift. Lastly, the roll rate isn't anything special, especially when compared to the Focke-Wolf 190 series. An average of 117 degrees per second will allow you to still keep your guns on most targets, but might be a hindrance when doing fast evasive maneuvers. If you absolutely have to roll all day, every day, do so at 350 km per hour, where your roll rate is at its highest. How should you use this aircraft then? If you're a good shot, I'd suggest taking the stealth belt for the 7.7mm and the air target belt for the 20s. 
At the start of the match, use your climb rate to gain an altitude advantage over the enemies, and stick around 3 km altitude as the match progresses. Force turn fights against anything that isn't a Japanese fighter. I'd suggest not taking the bomb with you, since it's not worth it risking your aircraft due to the performance hit and risk involved in getting to the single target you can destroy. Oh, I almost forgot! Use web smartly, it gives you a massive performance boost, but can overheat your engine if abused. Also, you'll want to save it up for climbing up to enemies, as it would be a shame to have it on cooldown when you're just out of reach of an enemy aircraft. One more thing, watch out when using the rudder. It is very powerful and can be used to get out of certain sticky situations, but can also send you into a flat spin very easily if mishandled. With the arcade part behind us, let's take a look at how this beast performs in realistic mode. A couple numbers on different ways to break your aircraft first. With landing flaps deployed, you'll stall out at around 150 km per hour, meaning you can perform some very short landings. On the other hand, watch out when deploying your flaps at anything over 300 km per hour, unless you like the sound of breaking flaps. Your gear can withstand slightly higher speeds, but I wouldn't advise deploying them over 400 km per hour. Alright, let's move on to sets. The climb rate of this aircraft in realistic mode is very similar to arcade mode. An average of 18.7 meter per second without using web isn't anything special, but is increased significantly with its use. Again, the engine seems to output the most power at around 3500 meters altitude. The top speed disadvantage really shows in realistic mode, with a power average of 557 km per Most enemies will be able to outrun you easily, especially at higher altitudes. In a dive, avoid going over 750 km per hour, as you risk losing your wings going above that. Turn time is good, as expected. The average of 15.5 seconds is great and will allow you to turn with mostly everything. Keep in mind that your turning capabilities significantly drop off below 350 km per hour and that you can't use your flaps above 300 km per hour. Also, do not fully deflect your elevators above 550 km per hour or you will rip your wings clean off. Roll rate is, again, not very good. An average of 99 degrees per second can prove difficult to handle in fast evasive maneuvers. The suggested deployment of this aircraft is very similar to its use in arcade mode then. Climb high at the start of the match. You can expect to web safely up to 5 km before starting to overheat the engine. Do keep in mind that web will literally double your fuel consumption, so I suggest taking off with 30 minutes of fuel in the tanks, as to not run out at the middle of an engagement at the 10 minute mark. Whilst you can indeed climb high and fast, I'd suggest not engaging in too many fights over 4 km altitude, as to not fall prey of fast high altitude fighters. Instead, try to lure them into a turn fight. Suggested belts are stealth for the Brownings and air targets for the Hispanos. Although you might want to take something with traces in the 7.7s, in case you want to do some range fighting before firing off your cannons. Since all of your armament is wing mounted, Set your conversions to somewhere between 300 and 400 meters and use your turning strength to get up close and personal. Plagia's Spitfire LF Mark IX is a force to be reckoned with. Easy and forgiving to fly, this is the aircraft both for amateurs getting into high IT battles for the first time and seasoned veterans who like to have fun at the same time. If this video helped you out, I strongly suggest smacking that like button and checking out my channel for more content. There's also a Twitter and Facebook page to keep you updated on news and live streams. If you'd like to support the channel even further, you can chip in donations on my Patreon page. I'm currently saving up for a better microphone, so that I can provide better quality voiceovers for YouTube and Twitch, amongst other projects. And as always, my name is Mike Gizboom. Thanks for watching.